Friday, 9 to 11. The Hague Report is live Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific uh, Daylight Time Nat right now here in Los Angeles. And uh, it's 9 o'clock now here in Los Angeles, Friday, April 12th, A.D. 2024. You can call in, guys, 1-888-775-3773 if you're... If you're between the hours of, uh, within those hours, wherever in the world. And uh, you can super chat. Some of you guys, I did see your super chats. And some of you guys, I saw your responses to super chats and different calls and things. That's cool. I'm going to kick my uh, IG on. I'm live on various platforms, guys. And it's going to be a loosey-goosey Friday show. It is Fob Friday. It's Frog Eyes Friday. Uh, what will I hope to touch on, though? Um, the Fed, a little nice little tip from uh, Big Bump. Big Bump gave Hake a tip about the Fed being anti-Trump. And some other things. O.J. Simpson. Some other people gave me tips on O.J. Simpson. A juror, a black female juror with O.J. Simpson. I don't have any clips for you today, but... Perhaps I can sort of reenact the clips. And anyway, I don't necessarily want to play that clip because I don't know if it's copyrighted and I don't want to get blocked or striked or... Well, I don't ca care if, I get, if it gets flagged. Um, the California literacy rate is pretty low. And that's not because of the blacks. I think that's the Hispanics, I think. But uh, the blacks are into their Obama phones. A little correction on the Obama phone thing, maybe. Courtesy of Big Bump, who sometimes co-hosts with Hake, has filled in for Hake. Uh, the minimum wage. And, um, and of course, your calls, guys. And maybe some other things. Some of you guys already on hold. But anyway, everybody... It's Friday. That means the A.J. Gallardo original theme song. So let's get right on with the show! theme song of originally written and performed and recorded by A.J. Gallardo with Hake on the organ keys. Can you hear the organ keys? I doubt it, <laughs> but maybe it's there. Nice. Oh, it's the Hake Report, the Hake Report, la la la. How you guys doing? I am fine. Lin Yen Chin, I saw your uh, response to your feedback on my reading of your super chats. I received that, and I and I uh, accept it. Thank you, man. Um, I have a T-shirt on called "All Thoughts Are Lies." All thoughts are lies. All thoughts are all lies all the time. Designed by the American Anchor Baby. And you can find this t-shirt on the Society6 JLP Talk. Society6 with the numeral 6. The number 6. Uh, dot com slash JLP Talk. So rebuildingtheman.com slash stores is the easy way to... That's like the central location to find all things JLP, Bond, and the Fallen State regarding... Jesse's books and the uh, t-shirts, mugs, stickers, stuff like that. Nice. Mm okay. So let me start right off before I get back to call, get back to calls. Yeah, because yesterday I was doing calls like crazy, which is fun. A little uh, update on OJ Simpson. I got a call yesterday from David in Ocala, Florida, 
who was speculating about that guy who got beaten by the LAPD on videotape, Rodney King. He was, according to reports, high on PCP, speeding through the Los Angeles streets, maybe neighborhood, and wouldn't pull over. And then he pulled over and he was trying to, struggling to get up and they were hitting him, according to what I heard from a friend of mine, in the uh, joints to, uh, you know, s- stop him from, basically, like, incapacitate him from, from getting up and moving and fighting. And he was a big guy. And hot PCP is also known as speed, is it? I don't know. I don't know my drugs. Well, I don't know if I should be calling them my drugs. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they... And to the lay person, it looks terrible. Oh, terrible. Like five, six guy, police hitting him. And he was hospitalized. He recovered. He was interviewed by JLP years later. He said, can, can we get along? Can we, can we get along? Can't we all just get along? In a, during the trial. They were acquitted, and then the feds went after them and, and got them, if I remember right. They were acquitted of, or I don't even know if they were charged, like a grand jury declined to charge. I forget what it was. But the blacks went crazy, and Hispanics, too. They had took advantage and looted, I heard, in Los Angeles here. Luckily, I wasn't working at Bond at that point. I was like a fourth grader or something, or younger, younger maybe, third grader. And I remember I was east of L.A. at that point in the suburbs, and I remember smoke in my yard from the fires that they were setting and looting and Reginald Denny I think was a white man who was uh, who was driving a truck a big rig they pulled him out of his vehicle or something like that and kicked him in the head they threw like a cinder block at his head I think he survived right did Reginald Denny survive but the blacks were viciously Hating and blaming the whites. And the uh, Hispanics were jumping at the opportunity to loot. There used to be a t-shirt, my parents went looting and all I got was this dumb t-shirt <laughs> at the Rodney King riots. <laughs> Cute, huh? But it was terrible. And uh, not long after that was the O.J. Simpson case. Blew up. O.J. Simpson is... Before my time, long before my time, well-known athlete. I didn't really follow football anyway. And he allegedly, they thought that he killed his ex-wife, the white woman, Nicole Brown Simpson. Simpson being his last name. Brown maybe being her maiden name. Feminist. Um, And her, quote-unquote, friend, Ron Goldstein? Goldman? Goldman, I think. Whatever. Well, I have a picture of one of the jurors, I suppose. One of the jurors, purported jurors, O.J. Simpson juror. Keith Woods posted this on, uh, on um, X. He's a popular guy over on X. I've talked to people who talked to him. I don't know if I've talked to him. In appearances or anything. Juror from the O.J. Simpson trial, according to this guy, says 90% of the jury, which is an inaccurate number, okay? Because if there's 12 jurors, 90% would be 10.2, right? No. No. I don't know. 12 jurors, all but 1.2, it would be 9.8. Right? No. 11.8. <laughs> no, 10.8. 10.8. I can't do math. <laughs> all but one and a all but one and a fifth. Something like that. Of the jurors thought the, that he was guilty, but they acquitted him anyway as payback to white people. And he put payback in quotes. Because this uh There were some sort of leading questions. I listened to this interview, and you see this short-haired, thin, fit, old-school-looking, classy, 
black lady with glasses. This is years later, I guess, in an interview. And he asks her, was this, this verdict at all considered payback for the uh, acquittal of those police officers? They acquitted the, pol acquit the police officers in the beating of Rodney King. They didn't kill Rodney King. It may, and it may have been justified. To the layperson, it looks wrong. But by police standards, it may have been acceptable. It just looks bad. Because manly work looks too rough for us tender-hearted betas. Or sensitive blacks who hate whites and, and cops and assume, assign bad intentions on the cops, right? And she said yes. 90% of us thought that way. And the man asks, is it right? And she goes, she shrugs her shoulders a little bit and puts her hands up in a shrugging, I don't, know, don't care. I don't know, I don't care. She didn't say a word, at least not in this short little clip. And uh, it was sort of interesting. And that's... So I guess my impression was sort of right, if this is accurate. If this lady is truly a juror and, she, and she's telling the truth about her own mindset, because she was part of that, and others. One juror allegedly gave the black power fist, the communist, communist fist. Students at Augustana College reacted to O.J. Simpson's acquittal, and it was an integrated school, I guess. And there were blacks all excited and whites all looking, just looking. Maybe either stunned or concerned or, or dispassionate or whatever. And isn't that typically the case? Whites a little bit more fair-minded and dispassionate. And blacks all excited and team black. Team black. Pork Chop Express sent me this to me. Uh, he's a guy on X who tags me on a lot of stuff. It's to be expected with these blacks to be thinking black. And I told in Hake News uh, today on the JLP show, I searched on this totally useless website, Google, or maybe it was Brave Browser, and they said that six out of the 12 jurors, 50% of the jurors were black females. The least fair-minded, perhaps, per capita, per capita, mind you, demographic. I know some fair-minded black females. Shout out, ladies. But per capita, the least fair-minded, the ones that voted 98%, those who voted over in Alabama, black females, against Judge Roy Moore back in 2017 for senator. They voted against him for some Democrat male. Judge Roy Moore being a sensible Christian Republican man who was chief justice of the state Supreme Court of beautiful Alabama. And 98% of them, those who voted, according to polling reporting back then. So no, not sensible ladies. And the uh, so six out of the 12, 50% black females. Imagine that on a jury. <laughs> Whoa. O.J. Simpson jury. And uh, eight out of the two thirds of the two thirds of the jurors were black. So there were two black males who may as well be at least the one if he actually really did the black power fist. Uh, may, may as well be a black female. Because to be on Team Black over above what's right is a female thing. Females go, oh, Team Christian, Team uh, this or that. Even Team, they join teams. And that is a, uh, the blacks are like that a lot. It's ridiculous. And the whites are starting to do that because they think, Oh, we need to start being tribal. And yeah, it's, it's fine to uh, protect 
your fellow man when you see one's, one's evil. Evil is befalling them. But you don't have to join a team or join the, take sides emotionally. And that's what they do. And it does that they're worse and worse and worse off, off the deep end, betraying actual justice. And the establishment is on their side, on that side, the side of the evil that's in them, not on their actual side. They're not thriving for it. People are like, oh. Some people call it identity politics. Identity politics works for them. We should do identity politics. I would, I'm before doing like the all white thing, but without being identity about it, without being the team this or that about it. It's because, do it because they are the ones who are qualified, right? And because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're black and you have nobody black who's like so-called representing you in the government, as long as that person's a fair-minded person. Right? Duh. But I guess that's white thinking. <laughs> and it, it may be, but it's actually a fair, actual fair, sensible thinking. Oh, I'm shaking my head. Hank, Hank is all into his whiteness, says Ned Post. <laughs> Roy Moore, decorated Vietnam vet, says Steve C. Oh, yeah, did, did he go to Vietnam or he went to something? And then he started to uh, look for a wife. And they called him a PDF. So sick. These sick people. So that's that. And then here's another team black thing. Mark Lamont Hill. Then I'll get to calls, guys. Mark Lamont Hill, I saw this on X from a friend of mine. O.J. Simpson was an abusive liar. Oh, Lord. Talk about woman words. Abusive. Who abandoned his community, meaning the blacks, I guess? Is that what he means? Long before he killed two people in cold blood, according to Mark Lamont Hill. I don't know. Everybody I respect who was older, who knew, who knew what was going on, who kept up with what was going on. Almost everybody. It seems like. When I was a kid, I thought that it was known that he was guilty. But now I don't know, nor do I care. But the people who are, like, more sensible and even, mind, even fair-minded say that he was guilty. And then the, there are people who say that he wasn't. Some people who, are, who seem sort of fair-minded, somebody said that Judge Joe Brown on JLP show said that it wasn't. He was uh, innocent. But anyway, uh, that's not my point in reading this Mark Lamont Hill post. Mark Lamont Hill debated JLP many times, or he tried to anyway. Intellectual, a professor, a Huffington Post darling, token, token, you know, the, how uh, the liberals use blacks as tokens. They don't actually respect them at all. Cons So-called conservatives do that too, but liberals do it the most because they have tokens up the yin yang. <laughs> don't say that word, kids. His acquittal for murder was the correct and necessary result of a racist criminal legal system. Racist means fair-minded. If the blacks are committing more crimes, they're going to get charged more. They're going to get more extra attention until they get under control, which uh, they will, they're only encouraged to go more and more out of control. So he calls that racist, though. So he, had, he thinks he cr committed a murder. But he says that his acquittal for murder was correct and necessary result of a racist criminal legal system. But he's still a monster, not a martyr. Monster is a liberal woman word, so Mark Lamont Hill is a liberal woman, I say. Mark with a C. Found that sort of an interesting team at black. Hate white people. Insane. Evil. Thinking. I'm shaking my head. Take that in. Ridiculous. JLP would debate him on uh, Sean Hannity's radio show and, and different things over the decades. 
he was a uh, buddy buddy with Don Lemon. You know, back when Don Lemon was on Commie Nonsense Network, and I do mean commie. Communist. Communist. Correct and necessary. What a ridiculously hypocritical statement. Yeah. Yes, Shane. I don't know if it's hypocrisy, because it, blacks don't mind being unfair liars, and they don't, again, they don't care about what's right. They care about what's black and evil. The blacks like this, like Mark Lamont Hill. And if that's correct, that juror woman does not care. Sweet lady, though. Just brainwashed. So, shout out to the brainwashed blacks. We love the brainwashed blacks who, who hate us. If we love anybody. Or who hate, they might not hate us. They just hate white people and cops. <laughs> Crazy. Thank you, Hassan. Who uh, put up those screenshots there for me. Wild, huh? I agree with the first part, says Shabo, that he abandoned his abusive liar who abandoned his community long before he killed two people in cold blood. That's dumb. Well, I'm talking about the abandon his community part. I don't know what type of a man that uh, OJ was when he was um, a successful athlete and funny actor and stuff like that, because I didn't, I never heard his name that I could remember. Until the Bronco chase, or the, actually it wasn't even the Bronco chase, because 1994, I don't remember hearing about him, but it was 1995 when I was a freshman in high school, they were replaying that, I guess, the Bronco chase. Was that Ford Bronco, I guess? The truck slash SUV thing? That's before SUVs came out, right? At least I don't remember SUVs, the name, term SUV until I was like a, maybe a senior in high school. <laughs> Maybe they're all out there, but I just didn't know what it was. Lord of the Pies says, I literally don't care about so-called black issues because I'm not black. <sighs> Nobody actually cares about anything. <laughs> you just get caught up with your ego, with the ego that has you. The ego catches you up in the excitement, the pride, the arrogance, the uh, self-righteousness, and that's what it is. But when you're presented with an issue, I think you can, I think you know, like, what, what's right. Or what's wrong, or at least you know not to, uh, whatever, take sides, whatever. That's a strength, whites. Not to get caught up, but it, <sighs> anyway, what a mess. Let me get to a, a call or two, guys. Uh, there are, there is, uh, one line open, you can call in right now, 888-77-JESSE, 1-888-775-3773. Philip is a first-time caller in Missouri, Missouri. Philip, how are you doing, man? Thanks for calling and holding. Hey, no problem at all. Thank you for having me. How are you doing, sir? Doing, doing fine, thank you. Amazing. Well, in the meanwhile, uh, I appreciate it. Hey, last time I did call uh, and spoke to Jesse a few months ago. I was with an evil woman. and uh, An evil woman? Evil. Okay. Um, liberal woman. Validate my feelings and all that other stuff. That was just, it was a mess. Yeah. So, 100%, I listened to Jesse's advice. Philip with one he L said, or two L's? Philip with two L's. Nice. I like to get it right. I just, it's one I of my appreciate hands. it. Go ahead. Either one. Um, but yeah, so I listened to Jesse's advice. He said, don't have sex for a year. I'm like, all right, it's going to be hard. Because then he said, I'm not in love with her, I'm in sex with her. Right. Good point. So I was like, okay, I'm trying to distinguish the difference. So I have other women I'm kind of hanging out with and just dating. Okay. But I think I've been in sex with all of the women, and I don't know what love feels like. 
because I've, if that makes sense, I'm trying to articulate it the best of my ability, but yeah, I don't know if I should even be focused on that right now. I'm just trying to focus on myself and get my pride and kill off my ego and not mess with these evil women, especially the liberal women. Nice. You say kill off your ego. You're trying to, you're, you're, uh, making an effort to kill off your ego. Yeah. And how do you, how do you go about doing that? I do the silent prayer and then I'm, you know, cause I know the, uh, the thoughts most of the time when I get in my head, it gets me emotional and I know I, all I have to do is do like what Jesse was talking about, because I called in and said, all thoughts can't be lies. Right. Uh-huh. And he said, well, you know, what thoughts are you referring to? And I was like, when it comes to making money, you know, I have to make thoughts all the time. It can't, I'm big with words. It can't be all. But yeah. he's like, well, those are practical thoughts. You just don't get caught up on them. Don't get hung up. If you're hung up on it, it's not good or something like that. I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm just kind of looking for advice because when it comes to hanging out with ladies, I, I think it's like, shit, this, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to curse her. I, um, I, yeah. Maybe maybe I was uh, in sex with all these ladies. Right. And yeah, you were. Never knew love. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you were because I can relate to that. Even never having had the S word, but that was the uh, <laughs> it was it was some ego S word slash emotion selfishness that uh, attracted and attracts me to the ladies. And um, that's all that it is, and it and love has nothing to do with it. So there is no, there is no don't you don't have to worry about what love actually feels like because it doesn't. I don't think it feels. It's not a feeling. It doesn't have to do with feelings. It's it's irregardless, which is not a word. Uh, that's terrible. We'll go with it. Uh, of feelings, emo- of emotions, if you prefer calling it emotions or whatever. It's. Um, and I don't even uh, agree with the people who say love is a verb or love is an action. Hat tip to DC Talk, the rap group. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I got you. It's, it is a spirit. Like, I think it's a spirit. God is love, you know? So you'll, you'll have perfect love as you, as you um, once you know God. Once you know that- God, you'll have perfect love. But I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with the the idea necessarily i kind of like it but i don't i kind of don't like it of killing the ego because it's more letting it die i think that makes sense yeah because you just and don't you you uh you f- fast if you will from the stuff that has you chasing compulsively or impulsively chasing after uh selfishness and pride and and uh desires and stuff like that you, you bear the, sense. you bear the, uh, the selfish pain of not chasing that, and then you, and then you just can maybe more uh, don't think about it too much, and then maybe more freely, dispassionately, and with your wits about you, deal with a lady or the ladies. Or what, and just live your life without being too in your head about it. Absolutely, and I believe what I've done in the past is use the ladies. Are you turning left? I'm turning right. Oh, okay. And <laughs> <laughs> excuse me there, but yeah, uh, I think I was just using them as a drug. Yeah. As it was, uh, sex was kind of a drug to me. Even so, even the even texting even. Well, all that stuff can be like some bit of a high, attention Absolutely. itself, and, and they're I'm using you. F- the- they're using you for uh, the same ego thing. Although they're not as into this S word, maybe they're into the using you, just as much as you are into using them. Maybe more. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I also think they're into my money because I make a pretty good amount of it. So okay. Don't dox. Because- don't dox your uh, your uh, wealthy status. <laughs> but yeah, mm-hmm. I get you. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah, that's a big yeah, that's a big motivation for women. And I don't hold that against them because they want stability and stuff like that. They want a man who's a, who's a man who can take care of himself well, and absolutely. her. 
Absolutely, and that's what I want to do, but it's hard to distinguish that. I don't think that's what I'm going to put out the first time I meet a lady. Yeah. But, you know, you also don't want to... I want to know that I'm well taken care of. I can take yeah, care you of don't want to. Yeah, you don't, don't want to let on that stuff. You want you you want to keep it a... Somebody says, stop bragging, caller. You're a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh... Yeah, you don't even want to. You don't even want to mention that. But I get what you're saying about you think that they are after your money because that's probably uh, quite true. It's a contributing factor, I would say. Yeah, don't don't let on to that stuff and don't um, don't even let them know you have it. Don't even bring it up. Don't even answer them if they ask you about it. You just be like none of your business. That makes sense. And don't treat them to expensive stuff. That makes sense. Because then you f- you're I, feeding I your own. I with Jesse on the no sex thing. I know it's hard as that yeah. right now. It really is. But I think I'm going to have to agree with them. And it just gave me a new perspective. You, then you're less <laughs> likely to be killed by them or to get obsessed with them that, they're, that you'll hurt them either or yourself. And it's easy, sense. and it's easier to drop them, and it's easier for them and you, and it's better. You're doing, you're showing them a little bit more, at least a physical version of of love, in that you're doing right by them by not using them up, that makes if you sense. will. Yeah, that makes sense. Shout out to the used um, up ladies. You're still. Uh, I think the love st- thing confuses me. The love so. thing. What do you ex- elaborate? I. To the best of my ability, I don't know how to describe love. So it's this is the only word that leave it alone. Then me. yeah, leave it alone because uh, these ladies throw around the word love. They have no idea what they're talking about, and males throw around the word love. They have no idea what they're talking about. It's that's a, a overused, abused, misunderstood word. That's that's the opposite of what. People are the the real thing is the opposite of what people mean. You know? Absolutely, yeah. I'm just one piece, the perfect piece. Yeah. And they mean obsession, caught up, obsessed with you, caught up with you, wanna be with you always. That's like I don't think that's love. I'm, in fact I'm quite sure it's not. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, well, man, I appreciate it. And, and don't tr- don't try to figure it out wow. because they say I think the Bible says I don't know if you're a Christian or if you're kind of I am. Christian friendly. I think that I am there. Anyone who does not love does not know God. God is love. So let him, and he's in you. You know, absolutely. So like he's in you deep down. You're just distracted from him. I think, and so you're. Uh, so if you just Get from get away from the distractions. Be quiet. Pray quietly without ceasing. Um, be self controlled and alert. Or he gives you a spirit of self control too. You'll be able to uh, control yourself. You know. Um, Absolutely. At least that's what the Bible says. Uh, I think you'll it's you'll hard. you'll grow into knowing love, which is God. I think so. I hope so, at least. Yeah. So I appreciate. It. Hey, How, I appreciate what, it. What 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 decade are you in? Thirties, forties, twenties? I'm thirty three. Nice. Of course, thirty three. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. That's Jesus's age. Well, I thought. All right. Well, we'll go with. Don't it, let it. But... Don't let it. Uh, don't let age put any light any fire under you. Don't let age of the ladies make you feel guilty for them or feel sorry for them because ladies are getting older too. Don't let, mm. don't feel sorry for them or yourself or feel any, any fire underneath you to get going because you don't know if you're supposed to marry or not. You don't know where life will take you. Makes sense. Hey, what do you think about liberal women though? Because They're cute. I tried it and these <laughs> liberal women, this lady was pretty and everything, but she had that liberal ideology she voted for Biden. I know Ooh. the comments are going to tear me up right now, but yeah, uh, no way to change him, right? No, you definitely don't want to change him. It shouldn't. I I don't know if it's a deal breaker, but it's just like 
okay, you're, you're a lost person. The Trump-supporting gals are lost as well, and some of the Trump-supporting gals think they're better than the liberal liberals, and they're not better than them. I agree with you there. I just know the uh, feelings, I think, come more from the left. Oh, yeah. They but are I, into, they are openly Simba. into, knowingly into uh, the feelings. Why waste yeah, the time, sense. asks Mike Gibson with a double question mark. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I do suggest, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading these here. So. Oh, you're reading the chat? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So hopefully you're pulled over, so you're not. Uh, no, like I'm back at the there. office. I'm. Yeah. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I suggest. Well, the Bible does say, "Don't be unequally yoked." So be, don't be getting too yeah. serious with with them. Just be a just be a friend. Be a light to them. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes and sense. so don't be trying to think. Oh, could this be the one? That's uh -huh. that that's playing God. Let God work that out. Yeah, or Satan, if, you, if Satan's really guiding your life, you know. <laughs> a lot I don't of times, know. Satan is... women are evil, man. I lot... don't know. There's a lot of evil women out here. Indeed, yeah. <laughs> Hard to find a good one. I don't know where to go. Because you're not a good man yourself. That's probably why. Is that right? Yeah. Maybe. Of I'm course. Probably right. I ain't gonna argue with you. Yeah. And men <laughs> I'm are more. On it, though. I know that men are more apt to admit they're not good, but they'll continue on and like chasing evil yeah that makes sense yeah i but, know that's what i'm trying not to do but hey i, I appreciate it man i yeah. really do i like this call man call me again sometime philip absolutely man and y'all have a good idea I, I like i love what you guys are doing yeah I just i absolutely appreciate everything y'all do yeah right on man but either way y'all have a good one you too and you can always contact jlp if you want private counseling uh oh yeah yeah oh. You can get like a I half hour, half hour or full hour by Skype or in person if you happen to visit California or over the phone. Nice. So you can I call. I would love to meet him one day. Thank you so much. Yeah. Call the bond right, office if you want to do that. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. You too. Take care. All right now. Bye bye. bye. Nice guy. Uh, let's see if I have counseling here. Let me just do bond. Bond, church, counseling. Men's Forum, Women's Forum. I think the Women's Forum is going to be next week, ladies. That's the third Thursday of the month. Oh, nice. Super Chats, guys. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> evil is still real. Nice to see you, man, or hear from you. There is one line open, guys. Aman in India. I had to do a short call with him yesterday. Aman. I'm pronouncing it correctly, right? Yes, you're right about it. Nice. So I had a quick question, you know, like how Jesse like does the prayer and if he has questions, he asks God and God makes him realize and then he shares it. So I was thinking like, uh, for me specifically, if you realize something, is it wrong to share it or is it like an ego thing? Uh <sighs> It, it might be an ego thing. Oftentimes it is um, a setup to be sharing something that you know or that you think that you know. It's almost like when you share it, you're getting your reward on earth and then you're not getting the reward of that knowledge in, in heaven in your heart to turn it into wisdom because you're just, you're feeding the ego by sharing it out of excitement and pride and wanting other people to know like a mama or like a preacher, uh -huh. like a preacher with the wrong spirit, if you know what I mean. And so that's, I, th I think that's the reason why you shouldn't share stuff that you realize uh, necessarily. So how is Jesse able to do it like, you know? Um, guided, he's guided by the spirit of truth. He's not guided by the spirit of ego and selfishness and pride. Uh -huh. He's not all caught up and excited and wanting people to know and, and trying to force them to understand, you know. And uh, so you'll, you'll, he's just pointing the way, you know. And he, doesn't, he knows it's not him. He's not, all, he's not all proud of himself for having realized this, you know. 
So that's you'll you'll be able, you, there's a time that you that you sh share stuff, and there's a time that you live stuff. Oh, okay. and he's so not he's not going around preaching all the time. He's living his life. Yeah. He lives a quiet yeah, he that. lives a quiet life, really. He just talks on on the show for 3 hours a day and then on uh, the fallen state for an hour hour and a half once a week and then uh and then church for 2 hours, but he's conversing with people. He's actually it's it's a humble spirit. It's not a look at me thing. Uh -huh. So you'll have that. So you, let's say that go ahead. No, you continue. You'll, you, you may have that too. It's just like, don't be, don't be thinking like a woman where you, where you see somebody do something and then you do the same thing or say the same thing, thinking that you're coming from the same spirit, but you're not. It's not. No, the, no, no. My, my, yeah, my intent was like, you know, like I sometimes I realize something and. I want to share it with you guys so that you can tell me if I'm wrong or right. Because if I realize it and I think, oh, yeah, this is the right way, then I'm probably like, it's not a good thing, you know. So I was thinking, uh, like, sharing it with you guys, is it right or wrong? Oh. Yeah, like, not like everybody, like, oh, yeah, like a Pharisee, I don't want to do that because right. that is only going to destroy me in the end. It's only going to invite me trouble, but I was thinking like sharing it with you guys, like Jesse, you, Hake. You definitely can. And you you can uh, if you want feedback, but if you realize something, then there's no doubt about it. You don't need to ask us. If you do have a question, it's fine to ask a question. We're just having some fellowship, and uh, and maybe we're wrong too in in our feedback for you because we may misunderstand what you're trying to say or whatever. Oh, okay. Because words, so I can. words and phrases and statements have multiple meanings. And yeah. in, in different contexts or different situations, they may apply. They may not actually apply in whatever situation because it may be irrelevant to that situation. So, uh, so we're trying to communicate. So it's fine to communicate if you have a question. Oh, so I can basically, like, if I realize something and I can ask a question about it to yeah. you guys, right? Yeah, yeah, you feel free to bounce an, an idea off us. Don't be, don't, be follow, don't be following your busy mind. If you're, if you're in doubt about it, maybe be quiet until, you, until uh, you know what to do, until you see what to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's but all if I it's but if it's bugging you, thank you. Yeah, if it's uh, if it's uh, after that passes and you just have calm, then you can maybe ask in the right way. Yeah, like I don't have that uh, like excitement, like oh, I need to share it. Like I like I I was just thinking like maybe I could be wrong, or I could be right, but I just wanted to have a second opinion about is, it. Is there that, something? Is like, there something in particular that you? think that you realized and now you're doubting it is there something in particular that you're thinking of a specific example i'm not asking for, for you to tell me the example but is there a specific example you have in your mind like not like doubt it but i want to make sure that i'm on the right path of like you know it, so for example like how should i share this like i just realized like about the aliens thing, right so aliens do not exist because it's a distraction. And if you like see people, you know, like people spend all their life until the 80, 90 years of age, they spend all their life searching for aliens, which do not exist. Not in the Bible. It says like, oh, I created species on another planet. God never said it. Yeah. So I read that it's a distraction to keep you away from God because if if aliens, if people knew aliens don't exist, people would revert back. You know what? Let me go find about find out about religion. Let me go find out about God. And then I realized devil always uses distraction to keep you from within. So I realized that. Yeah, I that, that second statement is definitely true. <clears throat> and aliens may as well not exist because 
that's irrelevant to our our lives, at least as far as we know. So stick with what you know and don't worry about what you can't know. It's a people get all into yep. dumb pursuits of things that can be one can be known and two cannot be known. Yep. Yeah. So I I, I, I kind of like that uh, statement. People say space yeah, is I, fake, <laughs> but people are, who say space is fake want to preach that space is fake, and that, too, is a distraction. <laughs> yeah. It's like an excitement thrilling thing. Yeah. Right. Nice, man. I, I've had a bunch of stuff like this, but I wanted to, like, have an opinion about, like, from you guys. Not, yeah. like, everybody else, but uh, with you guys, so... The distraction is your own thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, so whatever it's about, you can be distracted with the quote-unquote truth. I used to read the oh, Bible... I never thought about that. Yeah, I used to read the Bible until like 3 in the morning when I was in college. Trying to like... I wouldn't pray. I would start to like write down a journal pretending like I was praying to God in a journal. It was not a diary. It was a manly journal. Oh, okay, fine. Were you scared when you were reading the Bible? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I was. Sometimes I liked it and it rang true to me. Sometimes I was excited to see something that I liked that gave me hope or that seemed right that might help me. Sometimes I was scared and concerned, like, "Oh no, is that going to be me?" It was all of those things, and it was. Uh, I was. I was seeking God, quote unquote, the best I knew how. Yeah. Or at least the best that I was willing to do. You know, because I was okay with reading the Bible. I wasn't okay with being quiet and stuff like that. And uh, <laughs> so <Yep>. interesting. <laughs> so I can share it like with you guys, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's all I. Nice, have. man. Appreciate you, man. You. you you doing JLP's silent prayer? Yes. Right on, man. Appreciate you, Aman. I I do too. I appreciate you. Nice. T call me again sometime. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Speaking of foreigners, Michael in Canada is on the line. Michael in Canada, thank you for calling, man, and holding there. What is up? What's up with you, eh? Not much. Come to your phone. Not much, much, not much, not much. You're you're coming in. You sound kind of far away, like you're on speaker or something. Oh, sorry, just come, sorry. Just come close to the mic or. I'm receiver. here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry. I accept. Uh, do you know? Uh, just for a man, real quick, a man, a man. A man. What do yeah. you mean? The difference with GLP is that. He don't go to people. People go to him. Right. He yeah, he's platform. not giving. He's he's not necessarily giving out unsolicited advice. Exactly. People <laughs> call to him for advice. Right. So that's the difference. Just keep it to you, man. If people ask question, then speak your mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With the parents who got locked up for uh, their kids. Ethan Crumbly's parents. Or crumb yeah. or crumble, if you are Joel <laughs> Friday, the French. Crumble. Yeah, the the French Creole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what's up with the kid? He's in. So what happened to the kid? Do you know? The young man, I believe, is. I don't, I think he's sentenced already to like life in prison, if I'm not mistaken. Um. Yeah, something like that. Ethan Crumbly. He, and so he gave he gave time. like an apology a, a, a few months ago or something. Well, he can't keep his apologize to him, but he, he, he do his time. Yeah, yep. He, Why the parents have to be locked up then? I'm with you. I think that they don't need to be locked up at all. They uh, are already suffering, and they they need not suffer really. But they're already mm -hmm. suffering within with their probably false guilt and false defensiveness and uh, 
devils in them hating the devils who are hating them. Because there's just all kinds of judgment going around. And uh, I hope that they can accept their fate, unjust though it may be, and accept that they did raise their, they did fail their son, and yeah. that, uh, and accept it and have chin up king and queen. Chin up king and queen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's because a lack that's of, that's of love. The, what's be better, not bitter, and <laughs> you know. I hope that Ethan. It seems like Ethan might be doing that. He seemed to take responsibility and at least act like he's sorry. I don't know. He was 15 when he did it. Now he's like 17 or something. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah, back in 2011, man, uh, I was a little tug, you know. You were a little tug. With my friend. Uh huh. Yes, and I did a lot of crime, you know. And uh, I did my time for it, but I don't think my mother had to go to jail for it, you know. There oh, was just okay. Just a lack of love. She wasn't there for me. I wasn't here for her. So without communication, you cannot know what your kid is going through. Yeah, true. I didn't want to speak to her. And you know, I've known parents of problem children. Uh. Not murderers necessarily that I know of. Nah, nah. But I've known parents of uh, girls who were B words and who got R worded allegedly and got into all kinds of problems, had voices and were on mental drugs and stuff like that. And uh, the parents literally were used to the insanity. That was before them when, you know, they they use the term the hairs would stand up on the back of your neck with uh, when you li- find out the details of what's going on. But yeah. they literally can't could not see the insanity that they were uh, that they were continuing in these parents and the children. Yeah, but I'm, I think there's a lot of lack of love, like. A lot of parents don't even care about their children once, you know, they're True. old enough. Like maybe 10, 11, they just the parents let literally the kids go. Yeah, they, and they blame the, the friends. Oh, it's her friends. It's his no. friends. No, it's you. <laughs> you did that. You and messed up, yes, and you did not. You set them up to be subject to the worst in the friend, among the friends. And it's not the... A lot of the land that going to judge them. Only God can judge people like that. Yeah. And the, I live it. I live through it, so I know what it is. And God's and, judgment uh, is more gracious than, uh, than the world's. I saw this cool... I saw this cool uh, quote. Ba, 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 ba. Oh! Matthew 12, 31 and 32. And this may, this may not be the accurate translation, so bear with me, King James only people. I don't even know uh, what is the real thing, so let's go. And so I tell you, every sin, every sin and blasphemy will be forgiven men. This is Jesus speaking, paraphrasing, right? According to the Bible, according to the book of Matthew. But the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, which means Jesus Christ, will be forgiven. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or in the age to come. And uh, I don't exactly fully know what that means, but no, it me literally either. says every <laughs> sin, every sin will be forgiven. And blasphemy. People who say, oh, you're blaspheming Jesus. Oh, you're blaspheming well, God. But blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, I think that... Like me- Jesse said, there's no sin. Well, yeah. he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say it yet. Because it's on, it will be on Sunday. But right. what I think is, there's no sin because Jesus died for our sin. Right, we cannot sin. Um, and when people say Jesus is God, no man, He's our brother in the image of God. Yeah, we need to follow Him, be True. in His image, like He in, like He is in the image of God, just like us. I think it's a, it's difficult to understand for some intellectual people that reading the Bible too much. Yeah, um, 
It's kind of like the spirit is telling Does you. Does it make sense? What I just said about Jesus? Say it again in short, because you said it kind of long, and I was distracted. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus is not God. He's our brother in the image of God. So we need to follow him. Do you understand? Like, he's not God. He's our brother. And yeah. just like us, he's, he's, he is made in the image of God. Nice. That makes, I think that makes sense. Makes sense to me. He's just, so he's preaching, and you need to learn for yourself what he's preaching, to be just like him. He's like an example, a dad that we, you, you never had. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, right on, man. Right on. And uh, about the females beating people, man. Uh, I was, there, I was uh, hanging around my block, and a crazy woman stopped to mess up with my neighbors. So at this point, I get up. I'm trying to go into my apartment, and she comes to me. And she's, Mike, Mike, please do something for me. So I said to her, the only people who can give you help are at the hospitals. And she didn't like it. So she <laughs> threw a punch at me. And I'm, I'm, I dive in the punch. And uh, I put her on the ground. And now she's freaking out, you know. Oh, and she I keep her on the ground. A... And I said to her, calm down. I thought she threw punch like a drink, like fruit punch at you. But she threw a, her fist at you. Yeah. And you fist, dodged it I, and I'm put her on the ground. Okay. Dive it, you know? And uh, I, I threw her to the ground. And I... I keep her there, and she, she calms down. In self-defense, obviously. Yes, I, I never let a woman beat you, man. Yeah. And then, uh, but if I didn't do nothing, she's going to beat me. So right. then, the next morning after that, she came to my apartment to apologize. To apologize. Oh, right on. Never let a woman beat you, man. Yeah. Never do something. Not, you know you're stronger than her. You don't have to put your fist on your on her face, you know? Just... Right. Count down, lady. Yeah. And I swear she's going to regret it. Yeah, and she, that that puts that brought her back to her senses. Cuz she exactly. cuz she apologized <laughs> real she, quick. You did it you did it apparently you did it in, in some form of the right way where she was able to catch realize that she was wrong. Oh, she she knew it right when she hit the ground, she knew she was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice, Sometimes man. Sometimes you got to defend yourself, whatever, it's a man or a female. That's a great story. Michael in Canada, man. Like nice. A great story, I don't know, but yeah, that's a, <laughs> a real story. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm not, yeah. Cool, man. I got to <laughs> run. It's good talking with you. Call no me problem, mate. Okay. Have a good day. You too. God bless you. Bye. Guys, we're near the top of the hour. Uh, there is one line open. We're having fun. But it's Fob Friday. And so I need a downer. We need to diminish the viewers. We need to be bleeding viewers on the Hake Report. And I'm going to bleed them dry <laughs> by playing Andy Lau. And I don't even know the name of this song. It's like track eight on the Green and Silver album. I don't know if you would be able to look up what that is. Perhaps I can Shazam it and let you know what it is. Your musical Philistines, some uh, Mr. China himself, Andy Lau. Hope you enjoy it. Be right back. Hang tight. Sunsong 
生，仍然望你接受我，我亦只是上人，风波接近。到底怎么可抽身？谁能尽弃世上一切，去做快乐情人？即使有泪，已是无遗憾。相识只伤心人生，相恋只知多怨恨，更爱你更多一份痛心。终于今天不再等，终于今天不再问，我厌了红着泪眼做罪人。无论是爱与被爱。是寸步难行，风金雨劲，哪可守得稳痴心？谁能尽弃世上一切，去做快乐情人？只好接受，这叫没缘分。So nice. What in the world is this? <laughs> He's only repeating five different words, and I'm glad I don't understand a lick of it, because then I don't comprehend how hokey it is. Just kidding. It must be something deep. Here is this album. Oh, I can hear this. 无论是爱与被爱，也是寸步难行。风金雨劲。Okay. 哪可守得稳痴心？谁能尽弃世上一切，去做快乐情人？只好接受，这叫没缘分。Okay. 是爱与被爱，也是寸步难行。风金雨劲， End of fate。哪可守得稳？谁能尽弃世上一切，去做快乐情人？ Dragon and Phoenix Tea House。只好接受。Movie。这叫没缘分。Yuan Jin。Ding Dian Yang。1990 album. Would it be possible? Well, thank you guys for bearing with me through that beautiful music. In my opinion, would it be possible? Album, Jackie Chan. I gotta read some super chats, guys. Over on、uh, Rumble, some Rumble rants from Evil is still real. Who gives a fly blank? Nicole got what she got. You burn the coal, which means you date、um, black people. You will or marry. You will pay the toll. Says Evil is real, meaning get beat up or something, or hurt worse, maybe even than just beat up. O.J. died free from prison and free from his ex-wife, based black man. I just about that. Think of how much worse Nicole's death was. It Nicole with a C.H.、Uh, death would have been if she was not vaxxed. <laughs> I think he's trolling there. O.J. was always black, and he was always evil. Yeah, people are evil. Black on the inside. Which means like dark, not necessarily having to do with the race. Philip was with an evil woman. Lesbians, 
says uh, evil is still real over on Rumble. Are you suggesting that Philip was a lesbian? <laughs> I don't know. Nice. That's cool. I pray OJ repented and received Jesus by faith before he died, says Crichton Hendren, Herndon. That's kind of you. That's nice of you. Over on buymeacoffee.com slash the Hake Report. There's one line open, guys. I will get back to calls. R.H. Hernandez the fourth. Oops, I doxed him. <laughs> Bought three coffees. I think he goes by that on, on the internet, though. My first Hake coffee, and I've been listening for four years. Terrible. Yeah, but I didn't have buy me a coffee all four years or however many years that I've been going. So I think I got buy me a coffee within the last year or so. Ego is real. Bought a coffee. If the phrase you become what you hate is true. And conservatives don't have anger. Who said that? Why do you why do demon rats not become conservative and conservatives become liberal? If they hate each other, they become the evil aspects of one another. Okay, so uh, blacks hate racism, they become racist. <laughs> uh, regarding John 12, 1 through 8, Judas objected to the nard being used on Jesus, saying it could have been sold to help the poor, but Judas was the treasurer and wanted to pilfer the money. If the disciples suspected Judas of embezzlement, why did they let him remain the treasurer? I don't know if they suspected him until afterwards. Don't know. Don't know. Perhaps Judas' motives... Oh, I interrupted his super chat, which I do a lot. Carver commented on that. Perhaps Judas' mo or Judas motives were only, were only understood after his betrayal. Oh, man, I stole your thunder. And got detailed in John, the book of John, when that book was written. My basis is John 13, when Jesus gave bread to Judas during the Last Supper to identify him as the betrayer, and the disciples had no clue what was happening. What do you think? I'm with you. I think that's the case. But it, did it specify that Judas was the one who was grumbling? Or was it just some of the people or, or some of the disciples or something? Did it specify that Judas was? I... Uh, don't really have time. I don't want to take the time to look it up at this point. Ego is real, but that's valid. Um, you recognize the signs after the fact, kind of like the crumblies. They missed the signs until after the fact. <laughs> and then it all made sense. In a manner of speaking. Carver bought a coffee. The OJ story really ticks all the boxes for the perfect Hake story. One, black crime. Two, an evil woman. Three, the juice. Goldman, not OJ. <laughs> four, four uh, which I have no idea what, what or who Goldman was. Ron Goldman. Four, the Rodney King collection, connection. Oh, yeah. Five, the way the media treats him now as a BLM hero. Six, happening 30 years ago, old news. <laughs> <laughs> says Carver. It's really only missing one thing, and maybe a little investigative journalism on your part can clear this up. Was OJ flat or round? Oh, that's an interesting question. I think it was a baltard. Crumblay, says Joel Friday. <laughs> and he may be right. I don't know. C on C bought a. Thank you, Carver. It is interesting, the stuff that interests me. I don't know if it's interesting. C on C bought a coffee. Delilah wants to go to the Korean restaurant and have some spicy calamari noodle soup. What do you say, Samson? I'll, I guess I'll treat you. <laughs> you inviting me? I would probably have something different. Calamari, I only like fried calamari. <laughs> I pretend to, be, to eat the... Because calamari is what? Uh, op octopus legs, right? Tentacles. These have little nubs. 
This one was already used for calamari. We cut off the long legs. There is a National Geographic. I saw a National Geographic far left extremist at National Geographic poster for uh, octopus, octopi, for an octopus, and it had these long legs. I'm like, whoa, that's too long. This is an octopus, right? Nice. Uh, <laughs> sounds Korean restaurant. Korean food. I've liked Korean barbecue where you uh, put the meat on the hot thing and fr f cook it up yourself. I don't know the. I don't know these words. Thank you, C on C. Um, a few more super chats, guys. Not a victim bought a coffee. How is forced labor different than what we have? It's different from. Or if, the, if you're British or English, it's different to. Different to what we have or different from what we have. It's never different than what we have. Just a little correction there. Forced labor different to what we have. If so, will the man be, will the man be able to stand up against the woman taking his children as her property? Interesting. I didn't, I don't, I'm, I'm somewhat following the connection here. Forced labor is in slavery. God said we must work. So let it be God who's forcing you to labor and not the world, not the woman, not your debtors. No, you're in the people to whom you are indebted. Whatever. Um, even if you do owe them or you have to or they're cracking the whip, be led from within by what's right and work and have a good attitude as unto the Lord. Um, and I'm fine with slavery. I think we should bring it back so we can be honest about it. Because you're right, we do have slavery now, only it's a mama spirit slavery that pretends to be f for, the, for your own good, whereas with the honest Christian slavery, and I hear that a lot of Jewish people in America own slaves too, I don't know. Um, they might have they might have been Christian about it too, who knows? Um, that was more honest and manly. <laughs> uh, will the man be able to stand up against a woman taking his children as her property? Sometimes, but not always. And uh, <sighs> don't worry about it. Let her have it. Your life will be easier anyway. And their life will be easier, too, because you will be righteous and they will have a better chance rather than you being bitter about what the baby mama did or baby's mother did. Nice, uh, not a victim. I appreciate that question. I did my best. But I always do my best. Then how come you fail? Popcorn Thump Keg bought a uh, coffee. I believe you have worn a Knowledge is Poison shirt on your show. I have indeed. Although I believe that is a JLP shirt. No, it, it is not. It is a Hake shirt. The Hake Report. What does that mean to you? What is knowledge? Why is it poison? Please answer that first. Knowledge is facts. Facts are not truth. And sometimes you can call the facts the truth or you call the truth, you hold on to this truth. And puff, it puffs up you up. And that's poison. Poison puffs you up. You're all pumped up on your ego and distracted by this, this, uh, this pain slash pleasure of knowledge. And, and it's, uh, there's no life in it. There's no life in it. And I know that uh, different people have said, and uh, the Bible itself says, knowledge puffs up. So that's where I got that. But love builds up. It's NIV, I know, okay? I don't know what the King James Version says. You blame my mother, she's a liberal. <laughs> Not that liberal. She's actually pretty okay. But um, I know that it also says, oh, my people die for lack of knowledge. 
but you don't know what you, as you ought to know. You are knowing stuff that doesn't matter, or you think you know stuff, and it's a mess. Hope that helps. It's a lot of words. I would say that skilled surgeons are very knowledgeable about particular parts of the body and surgical techniques, and I would definitely want someone who has a great deal of knowledge and skill operating on me, not just wisdom. But you want them to have wisdom, too, because you don't want them all proud and all overconfident or uh, distracted or stuff like that. You want them to have the wisdom. And uh, you've called JLP a person with wisdom, but you're not letting JLP, with the knowledge he has today, perform surgery on you. Correct. I hope you don't go to the practical knowledge exemption. Laughing face with tears coming out emoji. Why not? Why not? <laughs> because uh, knowledge, you're supposed to have poison sometimes, right? A little poison is good for you in limited quantities. Right? You can poison your body with water. Water poisoning. Did you know that? You can have too much water. You're made of mostly of water. So even water is poison. <laughs> Especially nowadays with these PFAS or chemicals or whatever. So, uh, yes. You don't want the, the surgeon to be all into irrelevant aspects of his knowledge when he's performing the surgery on you. He may be thinking, oh, I learned about the toenail when your toenail doesn't need work. He's distracted with, maybe the, the uh, surgeon knows that the earth is an obvious globe and he's thinking about that that's a distracting knowledge when he's performing his pertinent surgery on you. That's all I mean. Uh, uh, you want a man probably as your surgeon. Some women are okay, I guess, maybe. But uh, generally a man is more dispassionate and less uh, has better depth perception. <laughs> I don't know if that comes into play. That's what I heard, if they have better depth perception. I'm not against knowledge, I'm just saying that it's poison. And the people get all puffed up on knowledge, don't you know that? But the Bible does say, uh, my people die for lack of knowledge or something like that. So, um, there's different, there's different poisons, just be moderate, moderation in everything. Hope that helps. Hope that's satisfactory. Um, but I'm going to, in defiance of what you said, that's practical knowledge pertinent to the situation. That's they have the wisdom to apply that practical knowledge. <laughs> because there's impractical knowledge, meaning it's, it's, Im it's impractical to be considering the, the flat earth or the obvious globe when performing a surgery or, or uh, talking to the ladies. <laughs> Nice. Jessica with five coffees. Love your show. Keep up the amazing work. Have a wonderful weekend. Hands out smiley emoji or hug emoji. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jessica. And Gregatron, last but not least, I would be remiss if I didn't get to Gregatron right now. Hey, I'm with Lin Yen Chin. I like Streamlabs. When I started listening to y'all, Streamlabs was the place to be. Now JLP, ta JLP is kicked off. So y'all want us to buy coffee and donuts. What the? Also, what does it mean when the treasure chest is open on DLive? We got to open the treasure chest on DLive. Um, Hake on DLive. DLive.tv slash the Hake Report. Shall I open the treasure chest? I think I'll do it. Hake's music is poison. Indeed. Let's open the treasure chest. <laughs> it's redis redistribution of, a, of lemons. It's socialism because DLive is a Chinese platform and uh, the Chinese are communists, right? And it, we, we use Obama's sunken chest. <gasps> Whose chest is bigger, Hakes or Obama's? Obama's sunken chest and we distribute lemons. We redistribute lemons, which are pennies or 1.2 cents. So, it's 
available to those who are participating in the D Live crew, the redheaded stepchildren whom I disrespect so frequently and don't properly appreciate. Congrats to Kilo Alpha Tango, got 63.6 lemons. GMD Jim got 36.9. I'm doxing their budget. Potleaf got 26.9. Shout out to Misty and Grandpa Daryl for the ice cream. Thank you. And Kilo Alpha Tango and light ice cream just now. Right on. And GMD Jim, Potleaf, all you guys. Hope that explained it. Mr. Gregatron. No blacks allowed. <laughs> uh, no blacks. Except for Nolo King, and he doesn't count as black because he's like Canadian or something. Um, no blacks in D allowed in D-Live. <laughs> Not welcome. Keep it moving. <laughs> this is a black-free neighborhood. Keep it moving. <laughs> I'm kidding around. I guess I disavow that. For the sake of my channel. I'm kidding. You can go there, Gregatron. It's, it's kind of fun. Boy, the lines are full, guys. Daniel in Texas has been on hold forever. Daniel, thank you for calling and holding there, man. What's up? Hi, James. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I'm glad you recently, you know, just now touched on knowledge and the importance of it. Because that is what I want to talk about. Okay. Now, I have a list here because if I don't, I just circle around and ramble. Okay. So I want to be concise. Cool. All right. So I have some homework from Joe that I completed. <laughs> nice. Where he talked about the battle of the crater and the uh, execution of blacks in that battle. Okay. Uh, what Joe failed to mention was in that battle, Grant withheld black troops to be the front line, to be the first wave of soldiers and it was very contentious because it was done purposefully grant um purposefully said we are not going to send any black regiments into the first wave because the message is that the confederates would simply execute black soldiers right off so instead of um playing into their hand in that manner, we are going to withhold the black troops. So Joe failed to mention that part. Oh. Okay. And yeah, there were, there were black troops involved in it, but they weren't the majority of the, the casualties in that battle. Oh. And it was, a, it was a union loss. The reason it's called the Battle of the Crater is the crater was made outside of Petersburg in the siege of Petersburg in Richmond in the summer of 1864. And the Federals had mined underneath, they had used a mine underneath the uh, Confederate lines, and they blew a hole. And the Confederates were able to recover and reinforce as the Federals had pushed into this crater. And they were able to essentially massacre this um, encroaching force of Federals. That's what the Battle of the Crater is. Okay. There it the Confederates were able to hold their line. What had he hell. said? What did he? What did? What did he say? He said that um, that black troops were basically were basically executed when they were trying to surrender. Oh. In the Battle of the Crater, so I'm I'm just so I'm shining a light on what the Battle of the Crater is, and I like Joe. You know, I, I like Joe. I, I like that he's bringing these things up. Nice. It, it allows it allows me to talk about them. Cool. Um, so that's my homework You're done completed. All right, now, <laughs> so um, that was a, So that was. Are you saying that that was uh, war and not a war crime? Quote unquote. That, that was that. That's just war. I mean, let's just yeah. Let's okay. just call it what it is. It's war. The federals. Uh, they had a means. Of, the federals took prisoners of war when the Confederates typically wouldn't, simply because of an ability. Um. If, Federals had preferred if, if you're a if you're a low ranking soldier, James, and you're in the federal army, you want to take a prisoner because it allows you to take that prisoner to the rear of the lines. Which means you're not going to be on the front line anymore. Ah. So nice. so you want to do that. You yeah. want to take prisoners so that it will get you out of the front lines. Then you can then you can guard your prisoner and return to the rear of the line. 
and then now you're out of danger. Right. So the name of the game for the Federals was to take prisoners. That's but interesting. The so the so the soldiers didn't care about winning the war; they cared about protecting their own personal lives. Um. Well, I mean, there's a number of things that uh, you don't you don't want to die. Right. There are ways to, <laughs> to avoid dying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the one way you could avoid dying. You could take a prisoner yeah. and go to the rear. If you're not taking a prisoner, you're still in the front line. True. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. All right. So that just means more time in the front lines for you. Yeah. If you're a federal. If you're a Confederate, they don't have a means of taking prisoners. The city's under siege. The population is starving. Mm. The, uh, you know, after the federals had broke the lines, Petersburg and Lee had a, had failed to. Um, he tried to escape with uh, enough men to continue fighting in a different area from the Federals, and the Federals had thwarted that plan. And they were they the the uh, Confederates watched a uh, a portion of Richmond burning from artillery strikes from the Federals. We were getting way deep into the Civil War. <laughs> I was not expecting it. <laughs> Anyway, I got the point you. is the, the, the Confederates don't really have a means of taking prisoners. Oh. And so, so they're not going to. And so they're the just going to kill this. them. Yes, the Federals know this. That they, they know that if they don't take a Confederate prisoner, they are fighting an enemy that is so desperate that they will not be taken prisoner. Right. Take no prisoners. It'll K them all. Um. I mean, it's kind of a, uh, you know, it's not, you don't have to wait for that order. If you're a Confederate, right, and you know that you have fallen into a siege, a siege is your worst nightmare, James, if you're a Confederate, because no siege has ever been lifted in the Confederacy. Wow. Once you, once you fall to siege, once your city is besieged, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. Because nobody's coming to save you. And that was the story of Vicksburg. Vicksburg fell no, with the expectation prior to it falling that Joseph Johnston's army would come and save it. But it, it wasn't able to. And the reason it wasn't able to was because the Federals had circled around and prevented Johnston from being able to connect with Vicksburg. And then it went on to siege Vicksburg. It was a very audacious campaign by Grant. It was unprecedented. Because Grant cut his supply lines, and cutting supply lines basically means your army's living off the land. Mm. Very precarious stuff. Armies are hard to feed. When you cut your supply lines, now you now you have a ticking clock of starving soldiers subject to, to d- disease. Sounds like Gaza. Sure. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I got to keep it moving, Daniel. I'm, I, I'm sorry I have to cut you short. Well, I'm not, I'm not oh, sorry. I didn't even get to what I wanted to talk about. All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's, we'll talk about it another time. Yeah, we'll talk about it more, man. I always appreciate hearing from you, man. Okay. All right. Take care. Gabriel in Toronto, Canada is on the line. I'm going to try to get to all of you guys, okay? So I have to ration time. I, I am besieged by Satan with uh, limited time or something. Gabriel in Toronto, Canada, thanks for calling and holding there, man. What's up? All is well, James. How are you? Hey, it's Jabril. Jabril. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Muslim, uh, uh, the Muslim Eastern European white man. That's right. That's right. Are you in your forties? Or can I ask if you're in your forties or fifties or sixties or thirties? Uh, James, I'm thirty-nine. Okay. God willing, this year I'll be forty. We'll see. All right. We have to live to that. Nice. Um, James, I'll try to be short. I just wanted to. You had previous callers like a few callers back, and um, you guys were talking how God does, how he works. Like, there's even an expression, God works in mysterious ways. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to share my experience, and I think, uh, like, uh, I, I've noticed that he does it sud- uh, in a subtle way. Uh, he does it uh, where in quiet, you know, like n- nobody, he doesn't involve, he may involve few people to come in and help you, but generally it's done just quiet, as long as you have, faith or like knowing him and if i may so the example was like this uh some 10 years ago i was doing job and my job was i'm basically bringing people to work 
I uh, pay their salaries, and then my clients pay me back later, right? Like 30 days, 40 days, like stuff like that. So okay. it's almost like my company, we were giving a little credit to the company for the service, and they would pay us a little more for that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm doing my uh, accounts receivables before my week where I need to pay people salary. So, and then um, by when, let's say I do payment on, on Thursday. By Wednesday, I realize that I don't have enough funds uh, for the payments because one of my clients, for whatever reason, he didn't pay on time. Mm -hmm. And uh, like me, I try to stay away from loans and things like that. So, and I'm like, I remember on Wednesday, um, I realized that, and I'm like, oh my God, tomorrow I have to pay like 25 people. I have no money, funds. And the more I start thinking about it, thoughts came in, what are you going to do? I start thinking, I, I start feeling heavy. There's no physical pain, yeah. but there's a pain where you don't know. It's like a middle age crisis. Like it's like, it's, it's in your mind. And I start getting worried, and then uh, I, I came home, and I couldn't fall asleep because of the thoughts and all that pressure. And then I'm like, okay. I'm like, I give up. <laughs> I make a prayer. I, I say, like, I had a feeling to run away. You know what I mean? To run away from the problem. Okay. But I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a prayer. I'm making a prayer, and I say, whatever happens, it happens. I learn from it. My usual prayer, right, in, in times of hardship. <laughs> And I say, um, like, you let your will be done. And I fell asleep. I actually, like, all the thoughts went away, everything gone, mine got peaceful, and I fell asleep. The next morning, I, I get up. I still am aware of the situation, but I'm operating like a zombie in a good way. I'm in a zone. Okay. So as I drive to work, thoughts trying to creep in. What are you going to do? You know, things like that. But my prayer makes those thoughts, like, you know, like they're far away in the hallway, barely hear them. And I keep driving to work. My receptionist calls me and says, hey, one of your clients says that there's check ready to pick up. I'm like, double check, they have to pay us next week. She says, yeah, I know, but they left a message. I heard it, so I decided to call you right away. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so I go to that company, and I ask the woman who usually pays me back, who provides me with a check, I say, what happened? Like, how, how come this check is ready? It was supposed to be next week. And she says, last evening, our boss, before we ended the work, our boss was so happy. So he came in and he started like, okay, give me all the checks. I'll sign all of them. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. And the funny thing is I, I just got enough and a little bit more to do my job. That reminds, then me, I of, knew. That reminds me of stories JLP has said where, there have been times where things have been tight, but yeah. he's always provided. It's always been enough. It's yeah. always been what you need. It hasn't always been more than what you need to where you have, quote unquote, peace of mind from That's having right. extra money. But you are provided. The Lord provides. Yeah, you have to have a belief. And um, especially when you're being responsible, like you're you're doing your what you're you're doing your work. Yeah, I knew uh, by Wednesday. I knew I did all I could. Yeah. But I didn't. I knew that there's a, also options. Like I could go in debt, but I really trying to stay away from it. Right. Um. Uh. And it worked out. Yeah. Right. Uh. But um. What I'm trying to say is, is that, like, we think we know what we want, and we think we know what's right. Yeah. But in truth, only God knows, and. Sometimes he may not give you what you think you want yep. because you think it's good for you. In reality, it's bad for you. And yep. he's not giving it to you for a purpose, for you to wake up, to realize or something, learn. So, yeah, it's a mystery. It's a subtle way. Uh, you have to just have, like, in those moments, believe in him. Well, knowing him that everything is going to be okay, no matter what. Yeah. Even if it doesn't go your way, it, because it happened, it's the right way, you know? And yes. uh, deal with that in the moment. Uh, we get caught up with the thoughts, and, and, and then we start doing wrong decisions. We start compiling the uh, problems when we, you know, do it in haste, in in reaction way. You know, panic. We, we have to be stay still. Panic, worry. Yeah. Trying yeah, to. Yeah. Yep. Nice, man. I like yeah, that so lesson. That's, that's the story for the for those who so-called business people. 
you know, trying to make it out. Yeah. <laughs> I know that. Right on, okay. Gabriel. That's it, uh, James, for now. Say, your, say how you say your name. I want to hear you say it. I, I, look, uh, most of my life I lived in Canada, so I'm 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 saying Gabriel. But uh -huh. when I hear Jabrail, I, I get like like spider senses. You know, I'm like I'm start like looking. When somebody <laughs> says Jibril, besides the spider senses, I start having goosebumps. You know, <laughs> that's like <laughs> a. <laughs> I, I get it's like an ego excitement about your name. It's uh, more but, like it's more like if somebody calls if somebody calls me Jabril, it's more like I know it's someone who knows me, okay. it's someone who's close to me. Yeah. When somebody says Jabril, I get more than that. It's <laughs> almost like now I'm responsible, like, like a like a like on a spiritual level, you know. Like I have to be like um, even <laughs> more, you know, like aware. Right on. Very interesting. Yeah, James. Okay. Uh, great callers, what? you and JLP. Just wanted to tell you. Thank you. What country are you from originally, by the way? Serbia? Uh, I was born... No, no. I was born in, in city Grozny. Uh, it's a Chechen Republic. It's part of Russia right now. Okay. Um, yeah, we had war with them. That's why we immigrated to Canada. Now it's okay there, but still. Yeah. Um, you know, people always complain. They will always find what to complain for. True. Um... Nice, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. I appreciate James, you calling. Thanks. Call me again sometime. No Real. problem. All right. Yeah. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. That's cool. I got to get to Kevin in New York, who's on the line here. Kevin, thank you for calling, man. Just trying to plow through all the calls. There is one line open. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. How you doing, Hake? Hey, it's good to hear from you. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Hey. It's great to hear from you. Definitely. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Uh, just like I, call, I told the call screener, I just wanted to uh, uh, engage in a slight theological debate or disagreement. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've been reflecting a lot on this too, and and I still feel like it's not necessarily a bad thing to take an intellectual approach to the Bible, because I I mean I've talked with the anchor baby about this before. And and I've told him, and I say this again now, that uh, there just seems to be so many things about the Bible that are uh, formulaic. You know what I mean? Okay. But but I I try my my very best to to steer away from interpretations of the Bible unless I can be shown that it's consistent, yeah, or that I can see it for myself. You know what I mean? But. Uh, uh, first of all, like I, I've come to understand for myself that, uh, you know, it's it's funny with us human beings and and using words because I, I agree with you guys and how you've said before that uh, there is no word the Trinity in the Bible. Okay. Well, uh, even though there's no the Trinity in the Bible, I believe that it's still uh, a real concept, you know, the understanding of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, they all, you know they I mean? all uh, are real, but they're not all one. They are not, they do not make up, that each of them is not God. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. Uh, okay. They're, they're not all equal. I would say yeah. that, I, I would also say that even though God the Father is the only one worthy of worship, I don't think that God will necessarily fault us for uh, the worship of Jesus. The reason why I say that is because uh, the disciples had asked Jesus, what what should we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus responds by saying that, uh, that you believe on him who he has sent. Do you know what I mean? So if we don't believe on him who he he was sent, Jesus himself, then we cannot be doing the works of God. Uh, to to put it simply. Okay. But to get what does it mean to believe on on him, Jesus, whom God has sent? What does it mean to believe on him? Um, oh, that that brings up so many things in, in my head. <laughs> I, I hate to go to, to, to return... go to one go to one. That it goes that it goes to. All right, <laughs> <laughs> or two. Well, 
I hate. I really hate to respond with a a question. Hey, That's fine. Go do but, it. But it's it's something I need to reflect on myself and and answer for myself. Uh, the question being that if you believe on, if you believe in something, it doesn't matter what it is. Do you also worship it? Uh, I have to reflect on that. Right. But um. But basically, the meaning of of that was uh to believe on the reason why God sent His Son, the very moment, uh, the very reason why He was among us, oh. and what He actually said to us, and and His so, His death on the cross, and the meaning behind that. In order to forgive, nice to uh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you know, I've I've ranted about. To have uh, mercy. I'm going to try to get to this quickly. Um, you know, I've ranted in the past about the apocrypha and stuff like that. Yeah, the Catholic. The, the Trinity. That's like the Catholic Bible or something, or st- various things. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't even be that. I, I truly believe that the apocrypha should be added in back into the canon of the Bible, and that many of Jesus's parables was actually him prophesying about the Bible, the actual physical Bible. Um, and and how I've said in the past that the Old Testament is the Testament of the Father, New is the Testament of the Son, but the Apocrypha is the Testament of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I remember okay. you mentioning that before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Maybe. That is the actual concept of the Trinity. You know, the Trinity being the, the man-made word, but that's the concept of it. Huh. What? Oh, okay. Um, I don't fully understand that statement, but it's kind of a, an interesting parallel. Yeah, I'm going to try to prove it to you really quick. Go ahead. Uh, it, it's because, it's because uh, Jesus says in a parable in Matthew that uh, this is how he's prophesying about the, the physical Bible. Um, he says in Matthew that the kingdom of heaven is likened to leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal. Till the whole was leavened. It's talking about bread, leaven being the yeast in bread, and how the woman had to put three measures of it into it until it was a whole bread. Um, I'm going to stop right there, and and I'm going to make it clear that I'm not sticking my own interpretation in this because later, uh, when Jesus was on the way to Jerusalem, um, he bade the disciples to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Ah. So he had to go on to explain to the disciples that he wasn't talking about bread. He was actually telling them to beware of the the doctrine of the fa- of the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees. Nice. Yes. Cool, man. So, he, yeah, yeah, it's very interesting. Thank you for giving me time to explain that. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate your call, Kevin in, in New York. Call me again. Uh, call me again next week if you like, and we yeah, can absolutely. discuss more. T- take care, everyone. God bless. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Bye. 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 Um, Kevin from New York is part black, by the way. Did you know that? Not to dox his partial race. I am remiss in not getting to more of the Super Chats. Uh, Evil is still real. My favorite Super Chatter in all of history, Hake history, that is. Evil is still real. Says, Calamari is squid, not octopus, is it? Thank you, Evil is still real. And he gave me a Super Chat to correct the record. Uh, Calamari defined. Because I don't believe anybody. Squid served as food. (laughs) I guess you were right. I was always told it was octopus. uh, Little octopuses. Or octopi. (laughs) Who knew? Evil is still real new. That's CJ. Do you eat... Are you allowed to eat octopus? Uh, CJ, you're a meat-only guy. Is octopus meat? (laughs) At this point, just call me Mike, bought a coffee. WWE, I know I knew it as WWF. I was over WWF by the time it became WWE. Not over, not just like 
whatever. Uh, champion in the mixed division, five feet, five inches, 130 pound, Michael from Canada. Clapping, cheers, clapping emoji. Thank you. At this point, just call me Mike. Appreciate you, man. That's a very nice uh, super chat. And Lin Yen Chin gave me uh, more, several more Streamlabs donations that I was remiss in not reading. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. And I screenshot them, but let me just... Okay, Lord Goodhair, you fail to understand proprioception, which is understanding of your body in space, your positioning and what you're doing with your body, I think. Proprioception is likened to depth perception as byproduct of using two lateral parallel eyes to judge the distance of your hand from your face, but proprioception lets you do this in a dark room. Thank you, Lord Goodhair. Proprioceptor, proprioceptors are in your muscles and, and stuff. It's like, and it happens better when it's natural and you're just um, focusing your, your mind toward doing an, an action. Your body will naturally do it more coordinatedly, oftentimes. Maybe a little training is help, helpful and necessary, of course. Um, then, uh, if you're trying to think about it, it reminds me of something that I saw in American Anchor Baby. I'm interrupting his super chat. Where, uh, this paralyzed man was able to focus his mind to make the video game work through Neuralink. And he just focused on get that ball into that basket type of a thing. Or get that soccer ball into there. And you're able to do it rather than like thinking about the body mechanics and, and don't kick the ground or whatever. I think. Lin Yen Chin says proprioception is inner perception on your external form. It grants 3D mapping of space time as service to your sapience. I, I like this. Sapience is your sense of I, not identity, but your sense of being versus not being, sense of right versus wrong, good versus evil. Hmm. Get Nick to explain how use of proprioception can be enhanced through so-called silent prayer to the point of sharpening your sense of balance so you feel the exact physical shape and distance movement of every object within arm's reach. That's cool. While, when seated and calm to the extreme, your extreme calm, <laughs> your sense of proprioception can not only extend through objects within arm's reach so you can feel their presence, without needing physical contact as the conduit of this sense. It might extend much further with training. I think that's fair. Fair enough. There's martial artists and different things, different people. A master of proprioception should be able to project his sense of objects within 10 arm lengths from his center of gravity. He can even use it to focus and enhance any other sense such as sight, to blend the two and gain new depth in accuracy of sense, says Lin Yen Chin. Nice. Thank you for the explanation, Lin Yen Chin. I did indeed, I believe, comprehend some of that. That's cool. <laughs> uh, so, thank you, uh, supporters. Guys, wow, we're coming down to the wire over here. Let me double check for any remaining supers so that I uh, am all caught up and have treated you all fairly enough. Bum, 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 bum. Why I'm surprised about calamari, calamari not being octopus. I, I think I was told it was octopus. Is calamari ever oct octopus? Question mark. Many people think calamari dishes are made from octopus when in fact calamari is actually made from a type of squid. Octopus versus calamari, what is the difference? <laughs> I don't know. 
Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to get to here. What did I say that I was going to get to? Obama phone. Obama phones. Um, Big Bump gave me this tip. Obama phone. FDR. Obama phones became a meme, I think, during the Obama administration because this black female uh, was like, I got my Obama phone. I don't. <coughs> I didn't vote for Romney. He stinks. He sucks. Don't say sucks, kids. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I think that's when it became a meme. <laughs> I got my Obama phone. <laughs> Shout out to the blacks. Uh, Lifeline is part of the Universal Service Fund. Did they have telephones back in, 19, in the 1930s? I think so. And established under the Communications Act of 1934 per Big Bump. Signed by the socialist himself, FDR, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Thank you for that clarification there. So, uh, Gregatron had said that it does... It, that Joe from Phoenix did have a point that Obama... I mean, that Reagan wanted people to have landlines, every household to have a landline. Get with the times, you poors, you poor people. Stop being poor. I don't know if that's the case. He may have. He may have. He may have had socialist tendencies. He did used to be a Democrat. But maybe Democrats were good guys back then. Crazy stuff going on in the world there. Oh, yeah, California literacy is at a low point. Um... I saw this, Reddit had posted this. Uh, it's a 2022 article, March 2nd, in uh, edsource.org, educationsource.org. California has the lowest literacy rate of any state, data suggests, by Karen D'Souza. Decades of underinvestment in schools, culture battles over bilingual education, and stark income inequality, sounds like a whole bunch of communist buzzwords, have made California the least literate state in the nation, as Capital Weekly reported. Nearly one in four people over age 15 lack the skills to decipher the words in this sentence. Wow. Only 77% of adults are considered mid to highly literate, per the nonpartisan data crunchers at World Population Review. In New Hampshire, the most literate state in the, in the country, only about five out of 100 lack English reading and writing skills. Its literacy, literacy rate hovers near 95%. Doesn't surprise me at all, said Niu Gao, senior fellow who uh, studies education issues at Public Policy Institute in California, at, as Capital Weekly cited. Capital Weekly. California, in general, does not do very well, and you can see that throughout the entire education pipeline. We really haven't been investing... For decades, she said, the senior fellow S, we've been underspending the entire time. I don't know if that's true. California currently sitting in a surplus bigger than many uh, states' entire budgets. For years spent less, about 13% less than the national average on kindergarten through 12th grade schools. Recent research suggests even high-performing California students score lower on standardized tests than their counterparts in better-performing states. Huh. School spending is one factor. I gotta end. I gotta end. But anyway, California's illiterate and the communists are blaming capitalism. <laughs> they want more communism. Dummies. I gotta end, guys. Uh, callers, I cannot get to you. John in New York. Hi, in Minnesota. I gotta play Frog Eyes Friday. This track is... Let's just play it. It's nice. Reform the countryside. Tears of the Valedictorian. Adios, America. Bye.
California countryside. <laughs> we sing that song where the singer sings he kind of knew how to feel the silver and the silver was gained from the rain. She sings the song where all her limbs ain't full. They roll to the golden tide. Oh, take that fool out of sight. But then you tell them that he got no babies and he got, got no babies. Take that fool out of sight. Frog Eyes is Canadian, not Christian. Tears of the Valedictorian, guys, is their album. I like this part where he comes back in. Two thousand seven album, I think. <laughs> Beautiful beach. We sing that song where the silver sings in Cartoon. I feel the state of her soul's game from the rain. She sings a song of all the hands of the rainbow. They roll to the golden tide. Joel Friday TV. Anchor Baby at four. The Fallen State at noon. I can't understand the lyrics. <laughs> ah, I do see your IG messages. Maybe I'll start a playlist of hate music on YouTube. Although it's not all on YouTube. What's up? Sorry, I'm sad. 2014. I thought you were more of a car caviar, man. Kind of a vibe, sort of. Well, thank you guys. Adios, America. Bye.